Hello, uh, everybody. Um, I wanted to, I feel led, um, to do to do something here. Um, it is uh, Wednesday evening, and um, I want to uh, answer a, a question um, that was asked to me, and I feel like it's such a such an important question in the time we're at and the time we're in that I feel like it would benefit those who follow this ministry to allow me to answer the question in this platform. Um, I'm not going to mention uh, the, the person's name and um, but I you know I want to tell you your, your, when I read your email the other day and your question uh, my heart was <clears throat> Instantly, I'll be honest with you, I, I went across, you know, where this is my ministry set up over in a spot where one of the spots I like to pray and I just sat there and I had my head down for a while and just feeling this burden um, and for the for the body of Christ and uh, and what she's feeling, what she's going through in, in this end times, in these very dark, dark times. And then when you're asked a question to me, I, I, I take it very, um, very serious. And uh, I, I don't, you know, that's why I didn't, I sent you an email back and said, I'll, I'll be responding to you. And um, so I've had, a, I guess, a couple of days to ponder on the question. And um, there are scriptures and things I want to share. There's a lot going through my mind. Um, because we share the same uh, burden, the same maybe different churches, but the same uh, heartache and the pain that we have found. And when I when I do this, uh, there might be people follow this ministry who are not never been a part of what is called the Message of the Hour churches. Um, it was one of the f movements that came uh, was started in the 50s and 60s. Well. 40s, you go back farther, where Brother Branham, uh, God's prophet, uh, the fulfilling of Malachi 4 and the different scriptures, Revelations 10 7, um, Luke 17 30, what his ministry was meant to do at, at going, starting at the beginning of the church age and getting into about the middle of it. Um, God took him home in 1965. Um, Brother Branham himself talked about anytime there's a movement. And I am recording. Anytime there is a, a movement, um, that after that movement ends, that the people then began to denominate it. And uh, it's no different than what's happened um, within the message of the hour. So from that movement, uh, there are churches all across the globe. You know, they're, they're everywhere. In every country, um, my country is full of, well, at one time there used to be a lot more, and so forth. Um, but it, it's 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 a mess, okay. It's a mess. So, yeah, my mind was going all kinds of directions, uh, sister. When I read your email, and uh, and my heart just felt for you, okay. So the question is basically, uh, obviously, you're going to read the title. Of what I'm reading, what I'm doing here, is is if I put it in simple terms. Um, in the hour that we're in, the condition of the church and the failure of the leadership, you know, where can we go to fellowship? Right, we, you know, the, many y'all, some of y'all may have a family, and kids, and you want a place to take your children, um, for, you know, to have a chance to be uh, influenced by the Spirit of the Lord. And um, and I understand in, in our in our great society and our great culture and what we've been taught brought up in from generation to generation of of the 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 place called the church the the building right the, the, the place that we go and we we worship the lord and and uh you know i've spent many 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 years in different ones uh, throughout my journey um and we go there especially a mother's heart uh, a mother's heart is different uh, there's just something she's she's the she's the the hen the mother hen over her little her little chickens and uh you know she's she's the protector of the home and she's so 
so she, a lot of times a woman's heart is so quick quicker to catch the spirit of the Lord and she's so much more in tune with her children and what they need so it's natural for a mom to really to be concerned right to be worried and to have a place for her children to go and know that it's a place where truly the truth is being preached okay and here we are 2024 and um, you know I'll be honest, when I first, you know, read your email, part of my thoughts were, you know, I mean, I know you all are far away from where I'm at, but it just made me think about my area, and then I'll tell you guys, tell the story. Um, the Lord just recently reconnected me with another message of the hour believer, who's about three hours from where I live, and it was a church that I was a part of back in the uh, 1990s. Um, guy named Foster Walters, okay? Um, many people who, who went to that church, myself included, um, I never knew what anxiety, an anxiety attack was at that time or a panic attack or, you know, the levels of, of oppression that a person can deal with until I set myself underneath that ministry. As I spent time, and I was talking to this brother the other night, and he, we could literally... We go back in time. He's been battling a health, a neuro, neurological health condition. It dates back when he started going to that church. Okay, demonic attacks that affect our neurological systems, that can affect our health. So many times, so as a mother, you're like, gosh, I want to take my children somewhere, but I want to make sure they're at a place that's going to develop them into the sons and daughters of God that I want them to be and, and you're praying for them to be, right? Train up the child in the way he should go and when he's old, they'll not depart, right? So, I'm talking to him, we reconnected and the question he asks me, we haven't, we haven't talked in years. Paul, do you know of any message of the hour churches that are still around in this area that we live in? Because he would start tell, talking about stories of ones who no longer closed down, uh, no longer worshiping, or, or the leadership isn't that is in it isn't right, and just so many things that are so many people, so many God's sheep have walked in and out of these churches and have been messed up. Okay, so when I was at Brother Walter's church, when I started having this all these anxiety issues, okay. I started going to doctors trying to figure this out, and God in His grace and mercy quickly was start beginning to deal with me, okay, and show me there's nothing wrong with you. And He took time for Him to start to show me, and and thank God He's put this gift in my life. And we're going to talk about some things in a minute. I have talked about it on this channel, but I think it'll be beneficial. But He gives me dreams, like all the time, dreams and sometimes visions, especially when I'm under this anointing down here and I'm preaching for the Lord. Um, he has set this up. My ministry was raised up for the fountain, was set aside for the foundation of the world because he knew the hour that we would be in and, and why he's raised me up to do this work, you know. So during that time with under Brother Walter's ministry, it was the dreams that began to start showing me, helping me. I was in my twenties. I had I had two little babies, you know? And all of a sudden I start the more I get to know people in the church. Half the church is on Prozac and, and, and antidepressants and, and anxiety medications. They're all mentally, psychologically a mess. But he's a message of the hour pastor, right? He's got ministers that come in, and part of his little brotherhood of ministers coming in, preaching to us at times. So it's a mess, okay? So I want to take time to, to talk, you know, and, and when I read, and I want to say this. The, the ministry God has given me to do has been very hard. And this last year, I, I you may have seen on my channel, but I God led me to send an email to 350 pastors in the message of the hour. And you, if you, if you guys, sister, or your husband, been watching anything that God is doing, the, the anointing He has put on my life is very different. 
It's like a line I've been roaring for the Lord in this hour against it. And a very, very powerful office to do this work. To cry out against it. And to comfort those. You all are, you're all, you're one of the, you're, your, your family is one of those of many. You're not alone. There are many, 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 many that I know have back have, have come and gone and, and now longer serving the Lord have fallen away from the, the, the mess of the hour has done disasters to people's lives, these pastors. Okay. But you you wanna you wanna know where do I go? What do I do, right? Is your question, do we just stay home and listen to tapes or where do we take up you know, you have children, where do we go to fellowship, right? But one of the things you said in your email <laughs> It was almost, it's just another vindication of this ministry. I've never stepped foot in the church in Louisiana. Okay? I had I had analyzed it enough. The Lord led me to it back in like 2019 or 20, 20 time period, originally when it started, to start to see there's a spirit on that church. And in a 2000, I think it was 21, I've done a lot of preaching. You all found me. And when God had me call the man out direct and deal. And then God gave me the dream. And said, if you don't repent, that I saw in the dream, I saw a major city in that state of Louisiana with those rail car systems that kind of like go, I don't know how to explain them. They're like the train things that are uh, not on the ground, but it's up in the air on the, in the uh, Amtrak or whatever it's called. I hope you know what I'm saying. But I saw that in the dream. That city, because he won't repent, will be struck with judgment. Okay? And then it took place, March 23rd of 22, when, when New Orleans was struck with that tornado, and they talked about it being like the Ukraine war had hit that area. And, I, and I'm showing God is using my ministry. This little nobody, this little broken, I'm nobody. I'm nothing on the whole spectrum of all this, but just... Like in the book of, I believe it's Amos, I think it's Amos the prophet, who says, I wasn't a prophet's son, I'm just a, basically like a farmer or whatever he says. Like, and one day God said, go, you're going to prophesy. And God has took me and raised me up, said, you, now you're going to go, I'm sending you right at, the, right at these churches, right at them, right at these leaders of men, and I've been roaring for the Lord with all my heart. They won't, he never repented. So to read your email and to see you all have walked in and seeing yourself, it's another vindication of this ministry that God has given me, that I am here to, 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 to speak to his elect. I'm here to do what Isaiah 61 says, to, to the day of vengeance of our God against these churches, but to comfort those that mourn. The mourning mother's hearts, the husband who's trying to lead his family, right? The young people that are starving, to know Jesus Christ, right? So I got some things I want to share with you. Something I read tonight, and I never saw it this way, from Brother Branham, talking about the third pole, and how the simplicity of it all, but I want to, and I want to share with you. So, any, so, so now as I go forward, remember this. The Spirit of Christ always stays with the Word. There is no agenda involved. There was no emotions involved. That's the problem with the pastors. That's why all these churches have been cried out against this ministry for the Lord in this hour. These are men that are, that are being influenced by their own emotions, by their own desires, influenced by each other. And they end up taking on each other's spirit instead of getting the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, that's why it's a mess. That's why... For myself and you all, I went to the same story. And finally, like, man, I don't know the last time I finally left it all and just kept walking alone with the Lord. Was it what I dreamed of? I thought this, no, it was, it was what you were, you, but you, where else, where else do you turn, right? But in my life, as God has raised me up to do this work, to lead his people in this hour because he knows I will do one thing for him I will point him to Jesus Christ the word there's no other agenda you got the as I've hit, hit on before the, the church in Louisiana when I when I first started seeing what was going on there the PayPal account money 
and they all got their websites and make sure here click here send us your tithe money tithing is a scriptural principle amen God wants us to pay our tithing. It's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's his word. But when you begin to see, recognize there's a spirit working behind these, these guys' ministries, God is trying to use me as like a sheath offering over the body of Christ. As the Apostle Paul, and I've talked about this so many times, I'll work with my own hands. He said, I'm worthy of, to, of, of the fruits of, your, of what you have because I'm ministering the word to you, the Apostle Paul. Paraphrasing, right? But you know what? I won't ask for your money, for your food. I'll work with my own hands. And that's the ministry God has given me to bring in this hour. So now... So we, we so we're gonna we're gonna answer a question. We have to. What's the word say, right? What's the scripture say? So may God help us. Now let me. If you've new to my ministry, and there's there's things that God has been having me speak on about this, what I'm going to talk about. It's been an unfolding for a long time, but I want to first. I want to read this. First John chapter four verse three, and every spirit. Let's pray first. Lord Jesus, we ask you, Father God, just bless us now, Lord, as we're reading your word. Have your way, Lord. Just speak to our hearts. May we be like those on the road to Emmaus, Father. Did not our hearts burn within us as you spoke to us along the way? Lord, there's an, it's a heavy hour. But Lord, this is the hour that you knew. You, nothing is out of your control. Nothing that is going on that has not ca caught you off guard. But you always, it's like the times of Abraham. When you told him to go offer his son Isaac. He goes all the way to that very, 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 very moment. And then you stay his hand and you provide a sacrifice, Lord. We're all in tough times. We're walking by faith. The hour's dark. Many of, your, many of your elect is scattered across the lands, Lord. She's seeking you one-on-one. -on -one, but Father, you knew this hour would come. And your prophet tied it into the third pole. I never saw this tonight, Lord, until I read it. But then, I, then it connects right to my own ministry. Everything about what's going on, what you've been doing in my life, it's been so supernatural, Lord, in this hour to do the work for you, Lord. God in simplicity. It's a love affair, little bride. It's you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Help us, Lord, in this hour. It's sad, Father, because you said yourself that the harvest would be plenty, but the laborers would be few. And we're talking the true five-fold ministry few lord many are called <laughs> we could take that scripture and say the bible says gifts and callings are without repentance oh we got many 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 are called brother brandon who preached the message anointed ones at the end time he was one of the final messages towards the end of his ministry a powerful message how they'll have the holy ghost come on them you'll sit in their meeting and say and god will speak to you the holy ghost falls on them and you get touched. You say, man, but I felt the Spirit of God. Amen. But still false. Many are called. Called. But few are chosen. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers, the true laborers are few. Lord, I'm connected to a lot of pastors through this ministry. I talked to, I emailed 350 to get three responses, Lord. What did Brother Branham say? Believer, make believer, unbeliever. In every in every congregation. I get I get all three. I get that exact th that, that that right there, Lord. I get one who says, done with the message. Walked away. Unbeliever. Then I get one who just starts quoting quotes and going different directions. It's just like can't can't catch and hear what at all what God is saying through what God's Lord, what you've been having me cry out against in this hour. Make believer. And then we get Brother Olamende. 
Here we found fellowship. But Lord, outside of that, I think if I got one brother right now, one pastor that I feel like connect, or not a pastor, more he's like an evangelist. He's an evangelist, Lord, Brother Isaac. And we share fellowship sometimes weekly of what God's doing through his life and his ministry. And he's feeding on this ministry here. And God is speaking to his heart and he's sharing his experiences under the same corrupted church leadership. The many that are called, so-called called. Father God, here we are in this hour. So Lord, anybody who's been led to this ministry, God, I know you put them here for a reason, Lord, making you continue to speak to their hearts in this hour. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, Lord. Where we're just dust and we're 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 frail at times, Lord. We we fail you, we fall every day. It's your grace, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Amen. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is it in the world. This isn't about me. Everything, anything that adds or takes away from this. St. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. And the Word was made flesh, right? Of, I know you all know, a lot of you know the Scripture references. Jesus Christ is the Word. So any ministry that, that I don't care how good it sounds, if it takes away from Scripture and gives you some justification of why that, that, it, that it now has denominated itself and put a period, okay? And I talk about the experience that I had. Right after God had me call out Joseph Branham's ministry last year, yeah, well, wait a minute. Was that last year? I lose track of time. I think it was in, a, in a 22, I believe. <laughs> There's been a lot. I've been a lot of preaching in almost four years on this channel. But right after that message, the angel of the Lord appears in my room. I had the most powerful experience during that few days after that period because it was a very hard message to preach. On the outside, humanly speaking, oh my gosh, that's Joseph Branham. That's Brother Branham's son, right? God has no respect to persons when it comes to his word, right? But what the angel Lord showed me is Satan works on the razor sharp edge. You cannot ever, you cannot put a period with God. It's a comma. You cannot. So Satan, so that's why all these mess of churches, they got their little period. This is who we are. This is what we're about. And as the one dream God showed me when God was having me hammering these pastors like the first you know year or so when I was sending all these messages out to different ones of them, different ones, and the, and their and the dream showed, don't just leave us alone. We like the spirit that we've created around our church. Just leave us alone. Uh uh The line has roared in this hour, and that's why God has prophesied to this ministry of a judgment that is going to strike the land. To judge this thing. There's a humbling coming. God has seen all the bride of Christ. Who's, who's scattered across the land. The, many of them have backslidden. And are, their lives are a broken mess. By the hands of the leadership of men. Amen. And God sees all this stuff. And then God always. And, they, and you know in these, in these Facebook admin groups. They, they make me want to throw up. But I'm still a part of them. Because I keep sending these messages right at them. That God always sends warning, 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 judgment. So God has been using me to warn them. Repent, leaders of men. They won't. Crickets. They've ignored this ministry. They've blasphemed it. They've called it, say, me say, they've done, it, the list goes on. Okay? So, it's the word. Okay? So, we, we go... The simplicity of the gospel. Let's read the scripture first. Very, This is a scripture that pastors love to use to beat people over the head with. To Remember, the spirit of Nicolaitanism is to divide and conquer the laity. 
to bind, they want to bind people just to them with fear, right? It's a fear and a control, and it binds them to a false teaching. Because that's where Satan works, amen? That razor-sharp edge that here are you, you're just a sheep. Uh-huh, right? I am, I'm, I'm great such and so and so. Who are you to challenge me, right? The list goes on. Now, we saw in Brother Branham's life where those, when he was crying out against the church, the Pentecostal movement, they were trying to come against him. But God, let me tell you something. God always has one. He never has two prophets other than the time of the tribulation period where we'll have Moses and Elijah doing that work because it's a short, quick, powerful work that takes those two prophets to bring that ultimate opening of their eyes, of their blindness, and that revival to the Jews to recognize they killed their Messiah. They crucified their God because he's one, one, Jesus Christ on the cross, right? But typically watch, God always has that one major prophet that's doing a work, right? That one, that one, we call it mouthpiece, right? So God raised up a mouthpiece, and that mouthpiece, all his job is to do is point people back to the word. That's it. Never to himself. And so that's why God set my whole ministry up. I don't have a church somewhere. But the other night I was thinking, Lord, gosh, do I take part of my building in town? Maybe I should. Maybe I should remodel it. And I could start, you know, and if God tells me to do it, I will do it in a heartbeat. My life is his. My heart, my soul, everything about my life, I don't, my life isn't about me. I don't live my life for myself. I live it for others. I'll do whatever he tells me to do because I love his people. And I see the need and it breaks my heart and it angers me inside to see the condition of people that I love. Man, they're, they're, they're scattered everywhere because of the failure of the leadership. From one extreme to the other. And a lot of times, a lot of these churches that are off, they, they, they have idolatry running their church where they put Brother Branham co-equal. That's another thing God has had me crying out against. Then you got the extreme where they don't even, they don't even really, almost like they don't even recognize Brother Branham's ministry. They're just trying to build their own camp. They're, they're the ones, right? There's a the middle of the road. So in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the, the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching, and we all can agree, body of Christ, the day is approaching. Time is out. The hour's late. So we're told, don't forsake assembling. Amen. Now, Matthew 18, 20. For we're two <laughs> or three are gathered together in my name. What is his name? He's the word. His name. There am I in the midst of them. Right? So, and I'm going to read some more scriptures in a minute. On my channel, I forget when I preached it. It's something titled, I See Something You Don't See. And it was a dream that God had given me at the time and a prophecy, thus saith the Lord, that God is done with the church. And that includes the message of the hour, the leadership. Not the message, because the message points us to the word, right? The problem was, wasn't Brother Branham. It wasn't him. It was those after him. And it was even the corruption with his own, within his own family that took place. All that stuff, right? So, in that, in that message, God's showing me that, and I, I put out that message, that God has done with the church. The sadness, the saddest thing about this message that's happened to it is it thinks it's not a part of the mark of the beast system, and it is. It has its own trinity. Many of them do. They, their trinity, many, many of them have the trinity of, of they'll, they'll recognize, they'll say Jesus Christ, but then it's Brother Branham. They, they make him God, or they make, and they make Joseph right there with him, because Brother Branham talked about Joseph, right? It's so deceiving, folks. Jesus said to be so close to see the very elect, if it were possible. 
But thank God as elect doesn't mean deceived by how where Satan has crept in because remember, we're on free moral agency to choose what we want to do, right? God doesn't make us robots. So God cried out through Brother Branham and spoke to Brother Branham and Brother Branham longed to see his son become that a prophet or become the, the man of God, the leader of man, the leader for the Lord that God that he wanted him to become. But Joseph made his own decisions. And God is done with his, his leadership. Thus saith the Lord. It's on my channel on October 14th. When God woke, told me to go to the basement, got to the bottom of the steps, and the Spirit of God speaks to me so loud. It's, it's, that, it's that voice that speaks, but it's so loud. It's done. I'm like, oh, Lord, are you done with me? What's going on? I, you know, I'm scared. Joseph Branham, I'm done with, I'm done with the leadership, of the Branham leadership over this message. Four days later, Billy Paul Branham passes away, gone. When Brother Branham said, you, you'll, you'll be an old man when there will be sharks swimming where you're standing in California. He's gone. California is still there. God is judging this stuff, folks. God is judging these ministries in this, this hour. And God has raised this ministry up. So somehow, some way, God is going to continue. I know he will to lead his elect to what God has called me to do in this hour. And it's a very simple message. You stay with Jesus Christ. He's your everything. He's your absolute you love him above it all, amen. Be led of his spirit in this hour, amen. Amen. So, two or so forsake not the assembling, right? You look at my life. Those who have been a part of my life from 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 the very beginning. And that's why I don't know why. You know, Lord, I'll start a church tomorrow if you wanted me to. My whole life since I was a young boy, 18 years old, preachers have always been jealous of me and have rejected me and have had nothing to do with, had nothing to do with me because the anointing on my life is the spirit of truth of Jesus Christ that continues to expose what they're about. But all these people that I've gotten the chance to meet and, and be a part of throughout my journey, they've all been drawn. Like, and if God allows things, me to reconnect, when I, there are certain ones that keep coming to my mind, Lord, I wish I could find that brother. I wish I could, where, where are they at now? And then I find out some of these other ones that I, that I, that, you know, that I knew in the message, or they're just, they're sitting at home too. They're just sitting at home. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Stay with me. So, Brother Ram. This is from the Seventh Seal, 1963. And before I read this, Lord, help, help me, Father. And if you all have maybe you've asked the question, I'm not sure how much of my ministry that you have, have, have looked at or listened to at this point, what God has called, called me to do. But in June 9th of... 2019, God told me to pick up my pen and, and write, sitting in my garage, okay? I didn't have a YouTube ministry. This thing kicked off March 27th, 2020. I had no idea that God put it on my heart. I got so obsessed and focused to remodel this whole basement, and I turned it into what it's become. Not knowing God was setting this whole stage up, this would be where he would use his ministry to speak to the nations. That even George Smith, whose brother was married to Brother Ram's daughter, had recently emailed me and reached out to me. Somebody from another country who saw me contact somebody, I guess, in Wisconsin who, who was following my ministry, who then contacted him and then and he wanted to talk to me and his you know his email the other day and, 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 and you know at first I didn't know who he was and, and I, I didn't connect the dots of a George Smith. And he said, you know, uh, good evening. I've seen some of Brother Paul's teachings. Praise the Lord. Is it all possible that I could establish contact with this man of God? Sincerely, Brother George Smith. I got his number. I seen like a Kentucky number. I was like, man, you know, I just, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't connect the dots. So I kind of put it off for a while. There's a lot going on. Like, I'll, I'll eventually reach out. And then realizing it's, he's married to Rebecca. 
and we have a great conversation for about an hour and he does a lot of missionary work God bless him he's in other countries a lot so all this is going on and 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 I, I feel like I'm in a dream I'm talking to this other brother the other night I'm sorry I know I'm I'm long winded I, when I when I, I don't to just email you back it would not even be fair I, I don't I'm not good at just sometimes just I'm better expressing it because it's remember it's the voice it's the voice amen it's through the just preaching hearing right how God speaks and so I felt led to do it this way. And I might, um, uh, there's a little clip from Brother George Smith that I really liked. And I found one day on one of his, on something he had spoke at a church, a message, at one another message church that he wouldn't smoke. He, I mean, God, he'll go wherever God leads him, that there's judgment on that church too. It's been dealt with. So God tells me in 2019, pick up your pen and write. So I'm going to read this quote to you and how this just ties right into beautifully what God is doing in this hour. And I don't know and what I do, I have a sense in my spirit and I'll share with you what I feel in a moment. But in 2019, I began to pick up my pen and it just starts flowing out of me. And folks, this is still not even understanding my calling yet. I mean, I began, I had a dream that God gave me and I share on this channel. And again, a lot of y'all know this stuff, and I'm, you know, I'm not sure how much y'all know where this is, my, this is a dream that the Lord had given me in two, March 24th of 18. And about, and I, and I felt led to type it. I'll read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a couple things and I want to read this quote. And then I got some final verses I want to share, then we're done, okay? I still feel like I'm in a dream. Like I, I like God is using me, this little no, nobody, to do this work. It it's, blows me away. I still, but here I am, because He knows I love Him. That's it. I have no motive but to love Him and to love His people. Amen. Amen. He had to break me though. Don't be stubborn like I was. Let, just let Him speak to you. I had a dream March 24, 2018. I woke up right after it. I was at a healing service of Brother Branham's and he was praying for everyone. And I kept waiting and waiting and was thinking, I will be the last he speaks to. So catch it, last, final. The final voice that God is using in this hour because he only has one that he speaks through in that office that we call a prophet, okay? And there's a five-fold ministry. So there's tr there's... There are, and so far, and it's sad to say this, that I can only think of a couple of true pastors, because a lot of these pastors, I keep God keeps having me trying to deal with them, and they keep bucking it, and won't repent. So they keep showing what spirit they're of, uh-huh. But I told them in my letter, and it's on the channel, that when the time comes, because it's coming, folks, very soon, I'll be there as your brother in Christ. Like Joseph, when they, they, they threw him in prison, Flew him into slavery, and God raised him up. And when the time came, he was like, come here, I love y'all. Let's go, we're getting out, you know. That's the love of Christ in my heart. So, I could feel it. Then I saw the Holy Spirit, and understand something, folks, this anointing that comes in my ministry, I had not experienced what is happening now, the last four years. I hadn't had that in my life yet. I've had supernatural things happen throughout my life at times. But God was just dropping little here and little there till the, the moment, the time that God has placed my life to do this work. It's like being, I've never experienced, which will bring maybe in a moment, there's a dream I just had this week that I recorded. And I believe, I believe from the interpretation I'm getting, it, part of it represents, even I saw George Smith and what I believe represents Joseph Branham in the dream. But what I saw that slipped through the gates. Oh, Lord. All I can do is keep warning, Lord. Touching many people's lives, the Holy Spirit. And all along, I was on the stage with Him with a view a little higher than anyone else. 
a view higher than anyone else as a prophet is put as an eagle. Finally, the dove came upon and the Holy Spirit came on me strong and then God spoke to me, you are a prophet like Brother Branham. And these pastors, they can't stand it. Because what does a prophet do? Brother Branham said a prophet, a true prophet. Many times Brother Branham said, he said, my ministry doesn't really fulfill like a prophet ministry because I'm, I'm doing other, I have other gifts, other things I'm supposed to be doing. A prophet is just raised up to bring, thus saith the Lord. They, they speak, and judgment and death follows after it. They tell the men, to, they warn them to repent. They don't listen. As Joseph Brandon was given to 2023, and right at the end of the year, God takes the life of Billy Paul. It shakes up the whole mess of the hour. All the idolaters on the Facebook groups going nuts, trying to figure, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what are we going to do, Brother Branham's prophecy, Brother Branham? He is the absolute. Jesus Christ, he, he will share his glory with nobody else. Amen. This is the hour with the spirit of John the Baptist. What did it do? I must decrease Jesus Christ, the word. He must increase. Amen. We're going to meet him in the air, folks. It's not about no, no, no man, myself, nobody. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. But it's, but it's, it's a mess, right? But God still has a program. He says, you know what? I'm going to raise you up. You're going to be the voice to speak to these people, to finalize the work that I'm doing before the rapture of the bride of Jesus Christ in this hour. Amen. And while this happened, I felt so weak in the dream. Folks, this ministry, I've talked about it time and time again. The anointing, it's so powerful in my life. It'll sometimes take me days to recover. That's why once a week, it tears me up. It, it takes it, that last message that the, the scarred human beings. My, I still heard over here from preaching that message. <laughs> yes, so strong. I knew the things that God was trying to say to Brother Branham. And Brother Branham last, he said to me, you also know the very things, the thoughts and mind of God. So here we are. All this is unfolding. To get to a quote I want to read. And I have to paint the picture right. It's a part of the, the, the gift of my life. It's the way God's wired me. I apologize as I'm painting this picture. Because a true, remember, the spirit of Jesus Christ, Antichrist, will, will, will start to take a scripture and say, you know, we don't have this here. It'll, it'll, it'll tell you, it'll take you from the word. The spirit of Christ always leads you to the word, amen? To stay with the word, right? So I pick up my pen and write, 2019, sit in the garage, it's a, it's a summer night. You are called a prophet in my, in my image to declare my word to this end time generation. A voice to my people of, in judgment to the lost. The lost church. See, God then took this and it, became, it began to unfold deeper through this ministry. As I told a man tonight, as I'm personal training this man, who's a guy named Jeff, has got all these health problems, and working with him, and I've been witnessing to him, and I've asked him again, did you read Isaiah 53 yet? Because I want God to see God do a miracle and heal the man. I said, well, we, I said, well you gotta, you got to mix the Lord in it. I can only do so much. He's gotta, you got to, you got to mix the word, Jeff. He said, well, write it down for me. 67 years old. So I wrote down Isaiah 53. I hand it to him. So he begins to ask about more about my ministry. And I begin to tell him, try, try to take a man who has simple understanding. He's like, well, I used to be a part of this church in town. And there's one church in town. They're really grown. So I start trying to explain to him the deception of the church. And he starts to get it. He's like, yeah. He starts seeing it. So now I'm trying to take it in simplistic terms to help him to see that why the churches are, are filled including the message of the hour, including the message of people that are lost, foolish, or foolish virgins, right? Souls that are in prison under the prison bondage of the false teaching of the, of the church of this time, amen? So I explained to him this. I said, listen, what if a doctor, a doctor's, there, you had a disease, but if you were given, I just try to create something quick in my head, give him a simple terminology. I said, what if God, what if the doctor said, this disease you have, if you will take high levels of vitamin A every day, it will get rid of that disease, right? 
And so you, so, but then the doctor all of a sudden, he, he's charging you for the vitamin A, right? He's making a monetary gain off the vitamin A. You're buying from him. You're believing it's going to, it's going to heal you and make you, and free you from that disease, right? So I explained to him what the doctor, who's, who is a corrupted leader, then has an, op, an opportunity to get a diluted version that costs him a whole lot less. And he tells you you're getting the full vitamin A. But then all of a sudden, one day, the disease progresses, and the doctor says, well, you know, I don't know, maybe you're just a rare case. Your disease isn't getting any better, and you pass away, and you're dead. I said, it's the same thing spiritually. You got churches who are telling you they're preaching the vitamin A, right? And I explained to him how that we are born again by the incorruptible word of God. Every verse, not adding or taking one from it, folks. It's your soul. So mothers, husbands, br take the word and bring it to your own children. That is, number one, your first calling and your first ministry is to speak, feed the word to them. Amen? Right? Do your best to, 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 to ask God to lead you, to speak through you, to help them and, and understand that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's promised to be in the midst as in my situation here, we have a small group. We get together and we have a, what we call a Bible study. And as of recently, as the scripture says, what we just read, I'm seeing it in my little group. And I'm trusting God's going to start tearing their hides up and putting some fires underneath of them. As, as it talks about here, as you see, um, as a man, okay, not forsaking the sin of yourself, as a man or some is, and that's what's going on in my little group, they're starting to get caught up in their little idolatries cares of life, busy, 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 and the devil's setting him up. Uh huh. But I pray God just slam, slam, slam the judgment and get their attention because if you're God's sheep, he going to get your attention. Huh? Amen? So we need one another. Amen? So if, if, if there's not something maybe at this moment where you're located at, I pray that God connects you maybe to be one other, find one other brother and sister, maybe somebody else, that you guys can fellowship together around the word of the Lord. Amen. And God has put this ministry here as a channel board, as this ministry to preach and speak into your life. Amen. But as you, most importantly, now stay with me. So this whole purpose, I'm going to stop reading the dream. Brother Branham. Seven Seal, 1963, March 24th. March 24th. You can't make this stuff up, folks. What's it say right there? March 24th, 2018. I didn't see that for tonight. Quote 289. Now, this is very simple, but I hope you catch this. Standing there when this left me. Talking about the vision he had, seeing the tent, right, the third pole, that these carnal pastors have ran all kinds of directions. Trying to draw, draw them to follow them, right, in their false teaching. When a true messenger points you to Jesus Christ, the word, and that's it. Something just come to me, he says, and said, don't fear. Mother, don't fear. Father, don't fear. Now catch this. I didn't hear no voice. See, Brother Branham many times got to hear an actual audible voice. But notice how this, this revelation is unfolding. In the, in the end, showing what the third pole is about. Everything, when I tell people God speaks to me, like, God speaks to you so much. It's not, ever, it's not an audible voice, Fox. It's on my life, as, as the part of this, I didn't read it to you, is God says in that 2019, I am going to use your life as a sheath offering over the body of Jesus Christ in this hour. Hear his voice. What is the third pole? He said, I didn't hear no voice, but like on the inside of me. Spoke. I have to just tell you the truth. 
just exactly what happened. Something hit, 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 hit and said, don't fear. This is that third pole. I'll meet you in there. It's you and Jesus Christ. The still small voice. It's God revealing himself to his body, right? So, but also understanding the condition of the time that we're in. When Brother Benham himself talk all the time of a ministry that's going to rise up in the church age book at the final age, right at the, right at the end of the age, a prophet, that they don't want no part of that. Because this ministry, God has raised me up like a David to lead his to lead his bride in this hour, amen. To show her his mind, to show her his heart and what God is saying this hour, amen. So don't don't worry about, don't get caught up in the building or, or all these other things. Ask God, it, it, wherever you're located at, Lord, give me, if it's another, like I said, sister, or maybe a couple other families that we can get together around the word. Amen? Because so I'm going to finish up with a bunch of scriptures last. We're with, we're st stay with the word. Amen? Brother Branham said God is going to write a second book of Acts to the bride of Jesus Christ. It's not a public show, though. What's Tim, what's Tim Pruitt do? Uh -huh. what's, this, what's this whole public show, false, fake church about? Uh huh. Dancing around, entertainment, look at us, look at me, woohoo. Oh, brother Tim preach, oh, brother Danny, all these other false pastors of this hour, amen. God has raised me up to cry out against all of them, amen. And, and that message I preach called The Secret, showing you the mind of God of all the judgments that have been falling all over the land, goes back to the church. And the leaders of men, because they won't repent. So God first starts striking judgment on their states, on their cities, and, and final, finally that judgment will come right for their household. Thus saith the Lord. As in the days of Moses the prophet, amen. As in the days of the plagues, God first started dropping. Oh Lord. God started dropping the judgments all over Egypt. And the final one struck the firstborn. The death angel came in the land. God ain't playing games in this hour, folks. Why do you think Brother Branham, the one of the last months of his life, the message, the snow white, on the, on the wings of a snow white dove, he rejoiced because he saw, as I showed the picture right in front of me, that the white eagle, white eagle, white eagle from the United States of America, a raised up prophet, dove leading eagle, amen. In my own Bible study group three years ago, took that picture and I've showed you all. And how God supernaturally, about a year later, put the put the, the eagle in the picture, a white colored eagle, lead with the dove, and the dove is leading the eagle, amen. The Holy Spirit, amen. I'll meet you in there. Amen. Love him with all your heart, husbands and wives, children of God. Love one another. You're a small group. Brother Ram said the squeeze. She'd be a small, a small little hunted out little group in the end. When I had the, the time to dream of the rapture, I saw a small group. It was almost like we we're running for our lives because we knew the time and the hour that we're at. Amen. I want to read these scriptures lastly to you. I always had trouble. Philemon, Philemon, I believe it's Philemon. You say Philemon, not Philemon, Yon. Philemon, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2. And to our beloved Aphia and our Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Acts 2 46. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness, singleness, singleness of heart. Mwah. This word, amen. This is your, this is everything. I got Bibles all over my house, amen. Oh, amen. 
I know I'm, I, I'm, I'm a brother Brandon said we talked about he'd be an odd one, but there'll be one to rise up, and I know I'm an odd one. <laughs> That's okay. I'm the oddball. I love that message, brother Brandon preached the oddball. Amen. I'd rather be an oddball. It's brother Brandon said it's the nuts that keep the bolts together. Amen. And I'm doing my best trying to keep the bolts together in this in this dark dark hour. Acts 2.42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. This is it. This is the apostles' doctrine. God writing another book of Acts. In fellowship, and in breaking bread, and in prayers. 1 Corinthians 16.19, the churches of Asia, Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is where? In their house. Acts 20, 20, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. God has put my, mess, my ministry as a, the Apostle Paul publicly. Jesus Christ coming through a camera lens. You keep meeting him with, with the Lord from house to house as God is leading you. May God, I pray, pray wherever you're located, guide and put those around you that are meant to be to fellowship one another around the singleness of heart and mind unto Jesus Christ the Word. Amen. Let nothing get in. Amen. God heal you. God continue to touch you. Amen. At Colossians 4.15 Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nyphus and the church which is in his house. Ma Matthew 18.20 As I've just read for two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them. Amen. Romans 16, 5, like, like also, likewise also greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who was the first fruits of, of Achaia to Christ. Acts 5, 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to, to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you have been, if somebody out here listening to this, you've been blessed wherever you're at, that you have an actual five-fold ministry pastor who's doing just what God is crying out through this ministry. And I've been told to, to tell him to do. But you know what? I doubt that you do. Because only one of them, one of them responded to me. That's why the humbling, the humbling is coming. As the vision showed, the dream showed. God have mercy in this hour. As an overseer, I get very, my heart burns inside. It burns like a fire in my bones because of the condition of the church and its failure to feed the sheep. To have a singleness of just heart, one mind, one vision to stay with Jesus Christ, the Word. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you, Father God, for, for my sister's question. Lord, I ask and pray that whoever takes the time to listen to this, that it'll bless them, it'll speak to them, Lord, that your spirit will lead them and guide them, Father. To, to not forsaking the assembling, Lord. But God, put God, give them those around them that can assemble together and worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Oh, Lord, there's a famine like there's ever been. Oh, there's churches on every corner. It's like I was talking to that guy Jeff tonight. He said, yeah, you're right. They're everywhere. They're morgues. They're, 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 they're the mark of the beast system that is, that is going to be used that people don't see it. They don't realize that they've already took the mark because it takes away from the word, Lord. It takes away from your word. Help us, Lord, in this hour. And you look at uh, it, 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 different movements, what things are going on, and if some of it sounds they got so much, little bit of truth, so much truth, but then you find, you give it a complete word test and they're off somewhere in the word. As Joseph Brandon don't, don't even have a, a ministry come speak in his church he knows about this ministry he knows about the life that god has raised up here i have personally dealt with them publicly uh, publicly and sent them right to their to their church did they ask me to come preach their own prophet their own father spoke of this ministry no they reject the word again and they mark everybody under that spirit with them a judgment upon it father God, help us in this hour, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Which brings the dream that I'm going to share lastly to you guys. So I have a dream. 
Today is, well, it's January 10th. Might have been, what's today, Wednesday, maybe, end of last week, possibly. Um, I'm going to back this out for a minute. And, uh, <clears throat> so, in this dream, many times the dreams the Lord gives me, um, sometimes it's literally showing me things that are going on in other people's lives, uh, either to speak to them, to help them, you know, or it's sometimes to warn them, you know. I recently had a, God gave me two dreams to warn my own daughter, and she flat out rejected it. And now she's under judgment. And she's going to suffer. And I saw it. I already saw it in the dream. She's going to suffer for this one. You pray for my daughter. She's running. She, she, she's one of those that, that was God was dealing with her. But she's unequally yoked. Right? What's it, how can two walk together so to be agreed, right? With the man that she's yoked with. It's not good for her. So that dream was very direct. But this dream had sort of symbols that I woke up from and I had to, the Holy Spirit. And I saw something that, that startled me in the dream. So the beginning of the dream, I see an individual, I'm at, a, I'm at an airport, okay? Those of you who follow this ministry, how I talk about a dream that I had in, I think, 2020, I believe it was, of, I, I was used of God and, and there's a there's like 10 airplanes that I'm a part of and God is using my ministry to drop judgment all upon the land for the Lord in this hour. So this dream is an airport. We're going back to airport airplanes, right? It's a judgment that's coming. I see a gentleman in the dream when I first see him. It's a guy that I knew when I was younger. I'm like, why am I seeing him? When you first wake up, you, it, it, right away it's like there's there's symbolizations and things, but when, but the gift that's in my life is to interpret dreams. And, I, and people give me dreams and I'm able to, God gives me the ability to interpret them many, many times. And if not, I, 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 have to, I wait till I get in the Spirit. And once I get in the Spirit of the Lord, it comes to me. Boom, 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 boom. So I see this individual who, now some of y'all may not get this, but I'm like, why am I seeing him, Okay. He's originally from Indiana. That is where Joseph Branham is at. He's also under the same. Now don't don't get don't don't get take this the wrong way. Under the same zodiac sign as as Joseph Branham. Folks, I look at all this stuff, and I mean, when I'm dealing with Joseph Branham, I, I saw when's his birthday. I want to know everything I am when I'm dealing with this man's life. What kind of what what? Because my own father was under the same sign as my own as this man. And I see the same, there's a stubbornness to failure, to not wanting to repent. As, as Samuel said, it's a spirit of witchcraft. It's, it's, it's like stubbornness to, to failure to repent. It's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's a spirit of witchcraft. So the man's under witchcraft. Yeah, chew on that message at the hour. But in the dream, he's looking at me and just smiling like, come here, just come here. Oh, I'm, I'm coming for you. That if you follow the man's life, Joseph Branham, he presents himself like he's just so sweet. Everybody just love everybody. Just that little sweet guy, right? But in the dream, I looked at him, and I knew I'm on a mission. And I knew in the dream, I see, I see right through your spirit, and I ignore it, as I have been. They can't trip me up. God has put such an anointing on my life to do this work in this hour. Such a, 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 a like Ezekiel, I've hardened your head to come against them. A iron resolve to not back down. I, not one, I, I ain't shaking with the wind. Uh-uh, you, you don't shake me one bit. None of these, none, they've come against me from one direction to the other. And here I am standing in 2024. Not back down one time from any, any of their, their, their running of their mouth. Or their, their false, false so-called brotherly love. That's fake. And I see it all over the message. It's false, folks. Shalom, 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 shalom. I ignore it. I continue on through the airport. I get to... And I don't have this in front of me. But let me real quick here. I want to read this to you. It's on my cell phone, which I haven't turned off. I don't want no distraction while I was doing this. 
in the Bible right here. All right, let me open this up and then I want to continue. So I get to, I'm progressing through the airport. Wow, I just saw something. And I get to the desk, okay? And I need to get a ticket. And I need to get from Indiana back to Ohio, where I live. I know it's a short flight, but I'm like, I need to get back, okay? I'm not afraid of the flight and the dream. But I want, I wish there was somebody to be a part of this moment with me. And this is where the civilization of George Smith shows up. I see the, in the dream an old man, an older man, much older than me as he is, who travels other countries as he does. And he says in the dream... I, hey, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, let's get the flight changed so we can all fly back from Indiana to Ohio with you. I'll be with you in this flight. It makes me feel a little bit better. I'm not, I'm not all alone on the island here, as I have been. All of a sudden, she, the lady's at the desk, which represents the secretary of who I've been dealing with in Jeffersonville, Indiana, the Jezebel spirit. It's got that, church, that movement blinded that I've been trying to cry out against to get them to see what's coming, but there's something happens to us in this dream. So, Joseph, or the, the, the civilization of, of, of George Smith, all of a sudden, the flight gets set, and I can't find him. He's gone. Because ultimately, he's not going to fully be on board with what I'm doing for the Lord. He sees a lot of it, but as a prophet is called, I'm called to walk alone with this in this hour. But then I see this. As I've been crying out for the Lord in my, all my heart, warning the people of the judgments of God. I see in the dream there's all of a sudden a terrorist who has a, a, a weapon that can get on the airplane and, and cause damage. Obviously, ending of lives, right? It's a symbolization of a judgment that's coming. So, he sets off the metal detector in the dream. There's literally the warning given. It's a warning, and I'm trying to tell her at the desk, did you not, don't you see what's going on here? And she's like, oh, it's no big deal. Just as the first part of the dream, I see the guy represents Joseph Branham, and that whole, oh, <laughs> that, that soft, friendly, jellyfish, Chad Lamb and Lime, Ohio spirit. The saints all over this message, amen? And I'm trying to warn her. And she's like, that's no big deal, and they don't even care. Folks, she also, when she gives me my ticket, she gives me the ticket, and it's the number 33 is on the ticket. And obviously, me, I understand it's a part, part 33 I don't like from you look at the, the, the demonic side of it, right? But then there's, there's you know, anything that God does, Satan always mocks it, right? Tries to duplicate it. I mean, our Lord Jesus Christ was 33 when he died on the cross, right? But there's a bunch of little heart emojis, like they're blowing me kisses. It's like this whole thing is just, you're not taking the mind of God serious in this hour. I've been, God is warning you. So you look at the number 33 and what it means represents in the Bible. And one of the meanings that I, that I came across... talks about David, the death of Saul, but it also talks about 33 representing a number of judgment. Anyways, I, I'm going to get off here now. It is this is that's a lot to my my mind. I care, I, I, folks. I carry I carry a lot. I carry so much with the Lord that it's. It, it, but it is what it is, and I, and I wouldn't choose it any other way. I owe him. I've owed. I owe him my life, and I've told him that. 
Lord, if I'm continuing to be in this position, I love you, Lord. Just here I am. I'm the chief of sinners. But have mercy on me, Lord. Here I am. Send me, Lord. Use me. I am yours in this hour, Lord. Help me to speak to your people and to lead them and, and point them to you, Lord, in this hour, you know? So, God bless you all. And I'm going to get off here. So, again, I, I don't have a... This is an hour I'm on here talking, and uh, but I'll, I will get this edited and up uploaded here, and um, and we'll email sister you back and and uh, hope you have time. Obviously, I believe you'll listen to it, and uh, hopefully it's, it, it speaks to your heart. More importantly, I felt like you it, it sprung a desire to do this, so hopefully it'll help others because we're here to serve one another and to exhort one another as we as we know the day is here. And approaching faster than we've ever seen so god bless you love him this is your absolute amen i'm so glad to see lastly to you sister and your husband that you're you're god's elect god has spoken to you he's been stirring your heart he's open he's opened your eyes to the truth amen rejoice amen rejoice that god has opened your eyes and has dealt with you to see the falses within the churches and things that you've been through to see only one thing, to hear only one thing, I'll meet you in there, the still small voice, Jesus Christ, the word, amen. So God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you all, hopefully, well, whenever I have another message from the Lord, we'll speak it. God bless you all.